for you, gave you just a taste of the incredible content um, and really incredible and diverse multimedia pieces produced by all the young women who contributed to this exhibition. And I really encourage you, if that piqued your interest, please go to our online exhibition. It gives you um, a far deeper and more immersive experience of all of that content. And you can see all of those art and video projects in their entirety. Um, as we've shared with you, this exhibition was a six-month project involving 44 young women from four different countries. They worked together to produce media projects using social media, including Flickr, Facebook, YouTube, and Skype. They really used very innovative forms of communication to interact globally. And what's so exciting for us and for them is that this week, some of them came together in person for the very first time. They've had a chance to share their dreams and their fears, to share what sets them apart and what unites them, and what, kind of, what bonds them together across borders often of race, religion, and geography. It's been a truly incredible project. So I'm excited to welcome the young women back to the stage. They're going to be in dialogue with Reshma Ravsi, who has been the lead project coordinator for Young Women Speaking the Economy. Um, she has been the point person for this project, really helping to forge the bonds between countries and young women and helping them to collaborate together to produce this incredible project. Please join me in welcoming all of them back to the stage. Thank you, Claire, and uh, thanks, ladies, to you and all our other participants for sharing uh, the stories. And I look forward to seeing the uh, exhibition online myself for the first time because it launched today and I still haven't seen all of it. And I know you guys are excited to see the stories of the other participants as well. Um, we've gotten a glimpse of this from the reel we just saw, but I'm curious to hear a little bit more from you about what impact you feel the financial crisis um, has on young women in particular? Um, as a Danish student, I haven't really felt the impact of the financial crisis myself, since um, there's no tuition fee, and each month we get a social benefit from our state. Um, however, I'm quite aware of that if there will be a bad economic condition when I graduate, some employers tend to favor men above women um, since, um, since they're regra regarded um, as a more stable part of the workforce. I think it's also important to note that um, regardless of economic crisis being present or not, women are on average paid less than men to begin with. So that's a fundamental challenge. And exactly, I mean, women are still subjected with a double burden, like they work outside their home to support their family, but at the same time, they're still expected to take care of their family in their own household. They have to take care of the laundry, they have to take care of the kids, so it's still progressing. Yes, as Balin said, also in Sudan, is the double work for women in the, inside the house, home and outside also the domestic work, and she has to work outside also. So they have, she has double work as in Philippines, in Spanish. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you. One of the students from Sudan said um, something that was in the reel there that we saw. She said, as young women were kept in the dark often about how the economy can contribute to inequality and injustice, and I wanted to see if you guys had any reactions to that. I do, yeah. Um, being kept in the dark um, is a familiar experience for women in terms of economics because um, it's my understanding that women um, are kept unaware of the basic functions of economy. That knowledge base um, is highly gendered from what I've, from what I've seen. I think also in Sudan, because of the capitalization of most of the public sector, I think that is women laid off of the work. Most of the women, of, uh, of, uh, of those who are laid off of the work are women. So I think the capitalization has had um, a, ba a big impact on these things also. And the privatization in Sudan has increased in the last years? Yes, right. very. Yeah. Uh, and Val, uh, you've just graduated, so congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> And in your media piece, at the end, you ask the question, now what? 
for yourself. How are you beginning to answer that question? Um, uh, basically, this project helped me a lot. Um, it sort of forced me to think about my future. Um, it's like really um, when I was in school, you just think about passing your deadlines and all those things. But after graduation, you just realize that, oh no, this is real. Next, <laughs> next semester, I won't be in school already. So um, I reevaluated what I want right now. So I realized that I am currently in the position that I could help others without really supporting myself because my family is a bit stable. So what I do, uh, do now is right, um, gearing more to volunteerism and like um, helping other people. It's like I, giving back to those people that are less privileged, but at the same time earning more because of the experience from it. So, what do you mean by earning more? What do you mean um, earning more in terms of um, feeding your soul, probably because you get to meet a lot of people, um, experience a lot of different things than you do in school. So that's mm -hmm. kind of it. That's fabulous. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, but I think in Sudan it is difficult to plan about what you can do in the future. Uh, specifically in the, uh, in the couple of years because this, uh, the situation in Sudan is not suitable for the uh, politic in the uh, politic situation is not suitable for a couple of years so it is very difficult to plan what you are going to do in the next year or then mm -hmm. something like that right mm -hmm. and Jessica I know you had something to um, when we talked earlier about sort of the idea of volunteering mm -hmm. um, you had something to say about that as well I did, yeah. Um, I think it's it's unacknowledged that being able to volunteer to work for no, uh, no pay, essentially, um, akin to an unpaid internship, is a mark of privilege. And I would love to volunteer, but I quite literally can't afford to do work that doesn't have a salary attached. So my humanitarianism has to come attached to a job. And I have positions with wonderful nonprofits, but that's something that I've been lucky enough to live in the Bay and be exposed to. So I think it's important to realize um, that volunteering, being able to volunteer, is a very specific socioeconomic ability, um, one I'd love to have one day. <laughs> and I know we've seen in this project that some of the differences in our societies um, include, you know, in, in Denmark, more state support for students, and so they don't have that burden. And it seems also in the Philippines and Sudan, family support that you count on when you graduate. And in the US, sometimes we're, we don't quite have maybe one or the other necessarily in the same fashion, I would think, yeah. We've all been using Facebook to dialogue for this project for the past six months. Um, it's been a fascinating way to use Facebook. And um, I'm struck myself by the different kinds of windows that open up for us into the lives of, of other people. And, um, those are both smaller sort of personal moments and larger political moments. And I'd like to mention two tonight. Um, and one of those um, involved you, Jessica, with a bit of information you shared with us around Thanksgiving time. Yeah. Um, so we were asked to make an introduction video to um, put a face to a name for everyone involved in the project. And I was um, making mine in the midst of packing for Thanksgiving weekend, Thanksgiving break here away from Mills. And um, it, was going, it was a very difficult holiday season for my family because my father um, was laid off in late October. And at this point, it was late November. And so things were bad, but I mean, I was still kind of hopeful. Nonetheless, I was going back to my parents' house um, in the midst of a really um, scary economic time for our family. And um, it was even a bit more difficult because before that, I went and had Thanksgiving with a friend whose family was doing perfectly well. Um, and so the contrast between Friday with my friend and Saturday with my family um, really, really made um, the recession real to me in a way that was unavoidable. And uh, my father was unemployed up until late March, and so it's been all too real for me, I should say. Um, our Danish student has uh, have learned a new term called breadwinners. Um, we wasn't very familiar with that uh, term previously. Um, and it seems to me that the crisis um, has 
um, meant that there's become a lot more female breadwinners in the United States compared to Denmark, where uh, a, lot of, a lot of women have, have lost their jobs. Um, young women in Denmark used the crisis to get stronger. They used um, the education system very active to get stronger compared to actually men at the same age who tends to fall behind. And the other moment, the political moment that happened was the separation between North and South of Sudan and the referendum. And I thought it was fascinating to have a chance to be in active dialogue with women from Sudan during this moment. Do you want to say something about that, Iman? Yes. Um, uh, to, I think to explain this situation, it's very complex because it has two sides. The first side is the South Sudan. It's, they are voted for uh, the separation. They are for, voted for that because they have own resources and they want to de uh, develop their region and this is one of their rights. At the same time, there are good relations between the South and uh, North people. So it was a very, very complex situation mm -hmm. to separate. Yes, we, uh, we want our region and we want our resources and we want to develop ourselves, but at the same time, we want that relation to be strong as uh, today's. So I think um, the relation between South and uh, North is still there, and there are is a very good re relation. Um, and I think that is one of their rights to, to get their own region to develop them, their self. Um, it has been very interesting for us students to read uh, the Sudanese posts about uh, the referendum and uh, about their field trips to uh, villages on the countryside. Um, since it has been very clear for us that there's a huge solidarity among the Sudanese women, um, that they feel responsible for teaching yeah. women on the countryside. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's, it is a pretty special moment for me during that time because um, I'm an international studies major, so we've talked about the Darfur conflict for like the, the whole day <laughs> in my college life. I mean, and it's interesting to get like the first-hand accounts of these people from Sudan, mm -hmm. um, to have inside um, view about the situation. So uh, the project gave me to, the opportunity to experience mm -hmm. that thing. Mm 